Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Flying with Overkill, AV8B Harrier for DCS World. I'm sorry it's been a minute folks, these guys really do take a lot longer than some of the other videos. Uh, there's a lot more involved in these uh, aircraft than uh, with some of the other simulators, so don't think that I've forgotten about you, it's not the case, it just it takes a bit. So anyway, today we are going to be talking about a few different things. We're going to be talking about the um, nav FLIR. We're going to be talking about the DMT, the dual, mat, dual mode tracking system, as well as hopefully if we get far enough into the teapot and designating some targets. We'll also take a look at uh, what a target waypoint is. That's going to be something that you guys are going to find pretty valuable. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with the nav FLIR. All right, so the NAVFLIR, FLIR, NAVFLIR, NAVFLIR is a pretty simple system to use. It really is. Let's go ahead and turn some floodlights on, make things a little bit easier to see. There we go. Bring some life out here. Uh, I can't remember if we can get rid of the stick on this one or not. I don't think so. So the first thing that you want to make sure that you've got going on when talking about the NAVFLIR is that we have it turned on. So you want to make sure this guy is up in the top position, which by default, if you're starting in an air start, it is. Um, and then... Get my camera to knock it off here, make things a little bit easier. All right, hopefully that'll work a little bit better here. All right, so it takes approximately five minutes for the nav flare to warm up. Now, the reason why we're in a night flight is it doesn't make much sense to try to use this in the uh, daytime. It really doesn't. So, but what you can do here is once you have the nav flare powered on, is we can take our HUD, make sure it is in night mode. So you can see right here, I think it's an auto. If we go down click one more time, oh, that's a right click. So that brightens it. That's day auto and night mode it has to be in night mode in order for this to work once we do that what we can do is then hit the sensor selected depress button so we're going to go down on it give that a quick tap and you can sort of see something happening here i want to show you guys this because this threw me off for a second because at first i was like what the heck nothing's happening so watch right here real quick let me zoom in a little bit hopefully this will be easier if you guys see check out right here and then watch this right here okay so I'm going to press the button again, and it goes away. All right, so it is turning on. You're thinking, well, wow, that's pretty useless. So if we back up a bit, our issue are these guys. So this is the video brightness and contrast options. So boom, there's your contrast. And then we can adjust the brightness a little bit. You can sort of see it coming into play there. You sort of get a lot or nothing it gets a little crazy so you get, don't really have to play with it quite this much but there we go up oh, there it goes it goes out again so now if we unpause the sim here while we're in an active pause and we dive down you can see everything a little bit clearer now let's go ahead and head over to a target area and this will make a little bit more sense here so we're going to switch over to waypoint two here. Turn my aircraft. I don't know why we're so asymmetrically set here. We're also going to gain ourselves some altitude. So the nav, nav flare is pretty simple to use. There really isn't a whole lot to it once you figure that out. The other thing you can do is you can switch from white hot to black hot by using the sensor select right button. So you guys can see that sort of changing. So that's going to be white hot as black hot. Uh, sorry, disregard that. Strike that. Reverse it. Anybody catch the reference? Anyway, so that's going to be your black hot. That's going to be your white hot. All right. So anyway, but uh, it does make things significantly easier to manage um, when dealing with a night attack. Uh, let me turn the RWR off. It's just going to drive us nuts today. We don't want that on. There we go. Get that stuff off the head. So we're going to get in a little bit closer here. And give you guys an idea of what we've got and what you can expect to see. Oh, I don't know why I'm doing this the old fashioned way. Speed time up. Come on, crazy. All right, so you guys have seen, anyone who's seen my videos has seen this practice range many, many times before, so it's nothing new. You can see we're uh, about seven miles out, so I'm going to dive down in. Now you can see things are really hard to see there, okay? I mean, the waypoint is right there. So if we cycle. All right, now we're getting a little bit better information there. And actually, I think, sorry, this is white hot. I was right the first time. You can see they're starting to light up. So definitely um, doesn't have, oops, 
didn't mean to turn the labels on. I thought I was turning them off. And this is where I would like pause and just so you guys can get some reference, start playing around with your contrast buttons and brightness. You see it's just gone there. Once you So on white hot or black hot that kind of works a bit better, but white hot gets terrible. We scroll all the way out, get nothing. So it definitely I would say it it's got some room for improvement. I mean, well, I don't know. I mean you can see things. But I don't think that without having that green box there, I think personally, yeah, I definitely would prefer to have it there. So that's about where you want to be, um, at least from my preference, um, for your attack run. So let's see here. The nav flare also is a repeater. Let me unpause my camera. Ooh, wrong one. The camera, not the sim. There we go. What are we looking for here? Let's go back to our menu page. Oh, FLIR. There it is. Nope, that's fire. We're into one of the systems. There we go. That makes more sense. All right, FLIR. There we go. So it's a repeater of here. And what you can do here is just turn the brightness down. That's why that's so br killer. Now, here's a nice thing. The screen clarity in here is very nice. The MPCDs are beautiful, in my opinion. Uh, very, very easy to see what's going on. Um, and you can see we are in black hot. There's white hot. Ah, my eyes! Anyway, um, so the nice thing about the NPCDs is they really give you a lot of contrast. Uh, makes it much easier to see everything, and then you can translate that information from the NPCD up to the HUD. And again, you can still use your sensor select right to swipe between the two. You can see that happening there. All right, and then uh, from there on out, it's just a matter of executing your targets and blowing things up. So with that being said, let's go ahead and talk about the DMT now. All right, so the DMT is pretty easy to use. Not a whole lot to it, thank goodness. You want to make sure it's turned on with this power switch right here. And then we can come back in here and find the DMT right here. And you can see it come up here on the screen. And you can switch between the FLIR, between FLIR and the, um, or sorry, the night mode and the uh, FLIR mode. But to use it is pretty, pretty darn s simple. It's actually really awesome. So let's go ahead and switch this to air to ground mode. That's not a requirement. Um, we're just going to put this in there to get the information I want up on the HUD. Then we're going to unpause. And by default, once you first activate the DMT, you can see it follows the velocity vector of the nose. Okay, so wherever the nose is pointing, that's where you're gonna wind up. But then what you can do is maneuver your aircraft so the nose velocity vector is over your target area. Once you have it over your target area, we can then hit our target depress button, our TDC depress. Now you can see that a target has been marked. A target point has now been created on the HMD. Now, a target point is much like a waypoint, but it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a target location. There's a couple different ways to do this. One, designating a target through the T-Pod, the nav FLIR, or the, um, or excuse me, not the nav FLIR, the uh, FLIR pod or the targeting pod. Two, if you were doing a CCIP release, so we're doing uh, dive bombing on targets, which we'll see later, um, once you pickle the bomb, a target point is automatically created on that location. Okay, so the nice thing is that if for any reason you need to do a reattack, your waypoint, your target point is already created without you having to worry about realigning or finding your target location. It'll be already displayed for you. Now, once we have a target point created, created, then we can use our TDC to move the DMT. Now, it's important to remember the DMT is in the nose of the aircraft. Okay, it's a little camera right smack in the middle of the aircraft of the nose. Sorry for the little lag. It's because I'm in an active pause and it doesn't like it. But you can see that camera right in the nose. That's the DMT. Okay, so it's not like a targeting pod. It doesn't have the field of view that the targeting pod does. Okay, but we can go ahead and slew it around, and you can see that our target point is also moving in relationship to the DMT. So we can just simply set our target area wherever we want, and boom. 
Now, the, the other thing that it can do is do a laser search, okay? It can't emit a laser, but it can search for one. So we can come up here to code, type in our laser codes. Let's say we were searching for 1653. We can hit enter then. All right, to actually make it do the laser track though, you have to make sure that you undesignate your target. So we've entered in our code, but now in order to actually get the laser track mode, so we would hit sensor select aft to switch to laser search track. So you can see we're in TV mode and we want to be in laser search track. But in order to do that, we need to undesignate our target. So we're going to hit our air to ground target undesignate or nose wheel steering button. Okay, you can see now that we don't have a target designated. And now all we're going to do is type sensor select aft once again. And you can see now we've gone into laser search track. There's our laser code being tracked. Now we don't have a laser actually being emitted out or emitted out there, so we don't really have to worry about that today. But anyway, so once again, real simple procedure, swapping it back. Simply sensor select aft once again brings us back in. We can unpause. Put our velocity vector over our target area, or at least get close to it. Hit that target lock button, boom, once we get it. We can move the TDC around as we choose. We found our target, boom, we move it and execute. All right, the last thing I'm gonna show you guys today in this video for the sensors, and by the way, I wanna preface that there is more information to these systems than what I'm showing you guys today. I'm gonna go ahead and undesignate this target. Nose wheel steering button, there we go. Anyway, so there is more to these uh, systems than what I'm showing you guys. This is just the basics as we get into employing them, as we get into using them with the weapon systems and the different needs are required. That's what I'm going to expand on them. Um, I just, I find that for myself personally, you bombard me with three different systems. Tell me all the different tracking methods, every little feature of the targeting pod, for example. You know, it's going to be very unlikely that three weeks from now when we're talking about using you know laser guide gbus or mavericks or whatever it may be then i'm going to remember that you know what i mean so i like to sort of back off a little bit and just sort of bring things in gradually i hope you guys appreciate that um but anyway so let's go ahead and talk about the targeting pod now all right so now we're going to go ahead and talk about the targeting pod so we're going to sort of zip through this real quick we're not going to go in full detail but we're going to get most of it in you guys are going to get definitely get a good understanding of how to use it so first thing we're going to do is tap our menu button here. We're going to go over to T-Pod here. You can see the standby button here. This will actually power on the targeting pod if it's not already on. If it's not already on, you could expect anywhere from five to eight minutes before it actually becomes available. So let's go ahead and give it a quick tap. I recommend turning your brightness down a little bit as the targeting pod screen can be quite uh, painful on the eyes. Taking a quick spin around, here is our laser safe and arm button. After arming the uh, laser, you'll see a couple other ones come up. The only ones that we're going to be concerned with for today in the interest of training is you can see that we have the fire button, which actually fires the laser, and you have the mode in which the laser is currently in. The only ones I'm going to talk about today, we have training, if you guys are really interested in that, laser, and more importantly, the marker. Okay, so you have your marker and your laser are gonna be the big ones that we want to worry about. Tap that fire button and the laser will actually fire. Okay, assuming that you're actually locked onto a signal or a target, excuse me. So, coming down a little bit, here we have our INS setting which also gives us a current laser code or designation code. This is for this laser search track code. This is not our firing code, so keep that in mind. Here is the uh, targeting pod mode, switching between TV and FLIR modes. Once you're in FLIR mode, you can come over here and switch between white hot and black hot. Let's go back to the CCD uh, mode. We have our current zoom level. Okay, by spinning the zoom level in, you can see what your view uh, zoom times is here on the right. We have the offset with the compass heading of the uh, um, teapot to the aircraft. Here is your meter length. This meter, this uh, measurement is measuring from the start of this arm to the end of this arm here so it just gives you an idea of how large or what the distance between a target maybe two targets are we have our data page for the targeting pod we have our wide field of view narrow field of view now there's something else i'll show you guys in here in just a second so let's go ahead and come up top for a second you can see here we do have our um, targeting pod indicator up here on the HUD. Now to actually use it, what we need to do is hit our sensor select down switch. So it's going to be your depress button. Okay, we're going to tap it twice. So there's once, there's twice. And you can see this switched from INS to T pod. We can now slew the targeting pod. Let's change our waypoint over to waypoint two here. Moving our targeting pod around. There we go. And you can see it creates a target 
um, point as well wherever the teapot is. All right, so let's come in here. Let's go ahead and zoom in a bit. Yep, those are our guys. So here's our handy dandy targeting area. Now, let's go ahead and zoom in a bit more. You can see we're in the wide field of view. That's the narrow field of view, but I want to show you something else. So keep this image in your head. Now we're going to tap this button here, super wide field of view. Boom. Now, I don't know why it switches into the FLIR mode. You can just bounce it right back out of it, but I'm not sure why it does that. But so now we have super wide field of view, wide field of view. Okay, so there we go. That's better. So you got super wide and narrow. But if you uncheck the super wide, yeah, see, you guys can see what it's doing there. It's not quite the narrow field of view. There's the narrow field of view. And then you have like a super wide. So that's just an option that you guys have. I'm not sure why, again, it switches us to the FLIR every time you activate it. But something to think about. Maybe it's just designed to be used with the FLIR mode. I don't know. Anyway, so let's go ahead and lock the screen up here and talk about a few other items that we've got up here. Here, like I said, you have your T-Pod. This is the laser search code. This is the code the, laser, uh, the targeting pod will search for. Here we have our MGRS coordinates, the targeting pod's relative position to the center of the aircraft. So the way to use this is to lay an image of the aircraft right down the targeting pod. Just picture it as a top-down view, and it gives you a relationship point of where the targeting pod is looking in relationship to the aircraft. Okay, obviously here we have our longitude and latitude in degrees, minutes, and decimal minutes with your elevation down below. Teapot designator codes, we'll talk about those later on. Here we have our bearing and distance to the targeting pod view location. Okay, so that's pretty handy here. You know, you got uh, two wingmen flying the same heading. You got your target at 205 at 21.6 miles, right? Um, you can cycle here between uh, area point and uh, uh, mark point, I think. I don't remember what the MT stands for. Forgive me. And then here we can slave the targeting pod to the other systems if necessary, but we're not going to worry about that for today. Again, demonstrate that at a later time when it becomes more prudent. Okay. All right. So those are the big ones I wanted to show you guys for today. Um, the last thing I'll show you guys again is once you have a target identified. So let's go into our narrow field of view. We can zoom in. Oh, here. That's my TDC being a jerk. Zoom in on that guy. And like I said, it automatically creates a target point for you. Now we can now arm the laser and fire it and you can see that L blinking indicating the laser is actually activating. Now if we wanted to change our laser code, we actually don't do it from this screen. We want to come down here, go to our DMT screen, find our code, zoom out a bit here, and we want to swap to 16, let's say here, or 1546, I don't know if that even works. And let's go back to our T-Pod. That might work. Okay, so there you go. That is our code. Sorry, that is our track code. Or, and our firing code of 1546. Alrighty, guys. Alright, so as always, guys, if there's any questions and comments about the nav FLIR, the DMT, or the targeting pod, based on the information which I have uh, talked about today, please, by all means, leave it down in the description below. Um, one last quick thing, if you want to center the uh, targeting pod again, just hit your target undesignate button a couple times, it leaves twice, and it'll recenter it back to the caged position. Alright, so as always, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I will see you in the next one. Stay safe, stay healthy, and take care, folks. Bye-bye.